Hey, I'm Mark, and today's project, I'm going to be building a headboard. My wife wants two of them. Um, <clears throat> the joinery I used on this, um, it's, it's all glued uh, with biscuit joinery. It's all glued together. There's no nails other than the little crown molding I did. And the lumber I used is actually a tree that I cut down about a year ago. I let it cure out, and I milled it up in my sawmill about two months ago and then letting it dry. And I've got a moisture meter. Moisture gets down to about 11%. It's ready to use. So let me show you how you take a piece of rough cut lumber and turn it into dimensional lumber. All right, this is a joiner. Uh, this is an old antique one, uh, real heavy duty. And this is a piece of rough cut lumber from my sawmill. It's cut about an inch and an eighth thick. And uh, as it dried out, it got a little warped. It's a little crooked. And I want to turn it into something usable, uh, <clears throat> usable three quarter inch, nice and pretty. So what we're going to do is uh, <clears throat> the joiner is it's got a blade that rotates, razor sharp, and this side of the blade of the of the tool is perfectly the same elevation in line with the tips of the blade, but this side of the table is adjustable up and down. So I can lower it down about a sixteenth, an eighth, and as it passes by, it eats away that eighth inch of material, and then it glides onto this, where it's perfectly straight. <clears throat> and you run it through a few times until you hear, hear the blade eating the entire length, then you know you got a perfectly straight and true board. sides that are perfectly straight and square to one another but I can't use the joiner on the opposite sides because it will make them perfectly straight but they won't be parallel to each other so we got to go to another machine that does that well let's head over there it's adjustable up and down with the handle it's got a gauge on the side and it rides the perfectly smooth flat side rides face down and there's a blade with wheel and rollers that pull it through that um, hit the top side and it it makes it perfectly parallel to the smooth side so you have to do several passes I'm going to get this down to three quarters of an inch thick so it's going to take a few passes I like to do it outside because it's uh, so messy <laughs> same thickness I just got to hit it that one last side so raise it up to the correct thickness I've already got all my other pieces pre-made so I was just going to show you how to do one I 
as you can see, we got two perfectly matching boards. All right, well, we're ready to get started. First thing I want to do is take my 4x4 four four post, and I want to put a little, you can see, just a little uh, chamfer on that edge right there. And I also use the same setting to do these grooves. So let's get to the joiner. Table set at 45 degrees. We're just going to make one pass down it. I've already run this through the joiner and the planer and got it trued up. It's three and a half inches square. Make it dimensional number. Again, I cut this from a tree off my property about a year ago. Hardly sounds like it's doing anything, but it is. see how it knocked it off. I'm going to go ahead. Alright, next we're going to be joining this three-quarter inch board into the post. We'll be using a number 20 biscuit. I'm going to cut a slot in here and there that match. I got lines drawn. <clears throat> 17 inches to the bottom here and 51 and a half inches to the bottom here. <clears throat> this is a biscuit cutter. Basically, it's got a little blade that comes out cuts a slot in there <clears throat> for the biscuit to go in and you glue it in the biscuit kind of swells and it's real strong joinery so let's get this set to 90 degrees and 3 8 of an inch depth we'll line it up with the center push down on it. It's really fast. Fits in perfect. Now we'll do this to match. Keep all the settings the same. Line your line up. Push down. You can see the, joint, the slot. Stick the biscuit in. That will glue up and clamp down and be stronger than the wood itself. Well, let's get all four of them done and we'll get it clamped up. I'm using a interior exterior glue, <clears throat> yellow glue. Just want to put some on your biscuit and I use a little paintbrush to be sure you thoroughly coat all surfaces. Pretty critical. I like to build stuff that will, 100 years from now, uh, this will still be in somebody's house. Maybe one of my kids, and grandkids, or great grandkids, and they'll be saying, man, they sure made things right way back then. I'm not using any screws. Um, you could use a Craig tool and Put a screw in at an angle and, and they work great but over a decade or so the the material um, the extreme pressure point of a screw and the wood fibers they give way and next thing you know it's squeaking and it's loose and um, you can use glue and screws and that makes a great system too but i i like to build stuff that Best not to, to mix two different materials, wood and metal, together. Just keep it all wood and, and they're in harmony with one another through the, like I said, build stuff that lasts a hundred years. And somebody may refinish this several times and, and they'll be wondering how it's all held together with no screws. Now, I'm not gluing this in. I'm just going to put it in place because I have to put in all the other boards slats in and they're all going to be glued and biscuited too so let's get this clamped and we'll let it dry for about 30 minutes or so and we've got a couple of errands to go run everything looks good and next we got to add the inner slats and to make that 
grew, we're going to do that in the joiner. If I didn't do that, it would just be one flat piece of board like a piece of plywood. So let's get back to the joiner. Well, we'll let the glue dry. Got three in there at a time. I've got to go run some more errands, and by the time I get back, we can add a few more. Got it all joined up and glued. I'm going to let it dry overnight and we'll start back on it in the morning. Alright, now that the glue is dried overnight, I'm going to put in some quarter round. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and glue it from this side to the post. It's going to get a, a lot of extra strength. Again, I'm trying to make something that will last for a hundred years. And Headboards can take a lot of abuse uh, from kids. And I'm building these for my spare bedroom for my grandkids when they come over. I will go ahead and nail it in just because it's uh, easier to than trying to clamp the thing together. Well, next we're going to glue the top board on. I'll also nail it just to hold the glue. And all this lumber I cut from a tree off my property about a year ago. And I built a sawmill here a few months ago. And this is kind of my first batch of, of wood. I got it hanging off about two and a half inches, front and back. Flushed it back. I dried this wood. I've got a dehumidifier in my barn. I let it run and with all my lumber stacked and a fan blowing on it. <clears throat> I checked it with a moisture meter and everything's good to go. And I got the crown molding cut. I sanded off the paint on the glue edge. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it as well. It's going to lend a lot of strength to the top board. The board is 57 inches tall. What she wanted, she couldn't find anything. Uh, Well, there's the finished product. This was a fun project. Now I got to fill all the nail holes with some wood filler and <clears throat> give it a good sanding and a good primer paint. This is the paint I'm using from Sherwin Williams. It's an acrylic latex enamel. Gives it a real hard surface. <clears throat> Going with uh, a satin black and that. All right, I'll apply the primer. I'm just going to use a roller. I got the uh, barn closed up. It's cold and rainy outside, and got the dehumidifier and the heater running. Temperature's about 70 in here, and the humidity's down to about 50. About the best I can get it. We're going to roll a piece, and then you take your 
paintbrush and lay it out. Long strokes with the grain and that gets rid of that orange peel. Well, I'll get this all primed up and we'll put three coats of black finish on it and we'll go install it in the bedroom. Well, these are the finished headboards. They turned out real well. Gave them three coats of paint. I did not sand between coats. Uh, and I came out with really, a really good finish. The top board, I used a quarter sawn wood. Uh, quarter sawn doesn't warp or cup over time. The grain in it is would be uh, perpendicular to the flat side. Flat sawn wood will warp and cup over the decades. I'll exp explain that a little more on some of my future projects. I'm going to be building a mantle and stuff and I'll show you the reason why we use quarter, uh, quarter sawn wood. Well, I appreciate y'all watching. Thanks.